Hello and welcome to the eighth part of the uh, PDO, um, uh, the PDO um, video tutorial series. Um, in this video, um, as stated here, we're going to be programming to uh, avoid SQL injection using the PDO um, class object methods. So, uh, as done before, we are connecting to the database and we're getting our PDO instance. Now, if you don't know anything about SQL injection, um, then just learn how to code the way that I'm showing you right now. Okay, so the correct way to use PDO um, to avoid complete um, SQL injection is as follows. All right, so we first of all make our SMT or our PDO statements, and we say PDO, and we're going to say prepare, and select everything from users. Okay, just if you watching this one video without watching any others, um, then we have a users table um, with two columns of user ID and name, um, and that's basically it. So we're going to try and extract this um, first row from the database without um, the the database being exploited and showing all of the entries. So select everything from users where user ID is equal to uh, question mark and uh, name is equal to question mark. Okay, we're using um, the question marks rather than um, the variable names or placeholders should we call them. So we're going to use bind value um, in this and we'll say that the first question mark is equal to uh, user ID which we'll make in a second and then SMT bind value once again and we'll say that the second question mark is equal to name. Let's just do an if statement to execute this one uh, SQL command and then what we'll do is we'll print our um, SMT and then fetch all and we're going to then print um, objects rather than an array. Okay, let's make uh, these two variables up here. We'll say user ID equals one and then name as you saw in the first one uh, when I showed you the database table it was David Thorne. Let's just change that to capital D. Okay, so now we've got the relevant data and we know that user ID and name correspond then to, to the two uh, question marks in order. All right, so let's come to the browser and let's reload the page. And as you can see, we get one um, entry come back, which is exactly what we want. We don't want any more than one because we're being kind of precise by saying where user ID is equal to this and name is equal to that. Therefore, we know we're only going to get one entry back. Now, um, SQL injection is basically by compromising this one SQL um, statement by negating what we've got, but not what we've got here, and just telling it to allow everything to come out. So the legacy way of doing this would be then to put user ID here, for example, because this is an integer. Therefore, we don't need the quotes around it and then name is a, a var char, so therefore we need quotes around it and we just put name in. This is the way that we would do it using the MySQL functions. So now um, we'll run the query once again just to show you what we're going to get and we're going to get the same thing because effectively it's done the same thing but bind value has replaced those question marks with the appropriate um, a, a single apostrophes and also then with the value which we told it to. Now, if we now change this to 1 or 10,000 and then just stick a couple of letters in here, we know that we're not going to find anything. Therefore, we refresh the page and you see that we get an empty error, uh, empty array back, sorry, because um, the SQL command is executed correctly and it's returning an empty array because there's been no results found. Therefore, it's just defaulted by returning an empty array, which is fine. Now, if we then added uh, after this a, um, a single quote, now name is coming inside of here, all right? So it's coming inside of here. So if it's effectively, what it's doing is it's putting a single quote there after the David Thorne when it's typed in here. This is effectively what it's doing is it's putting if it w was correct, it'd be putting that in there, like that, within a single quote after it. 
and then what we're going to do is after this we're going to say or 1 equals and we're going to do a single apostrophe and 1 so effectively what that's putting inside of here is or 1 equals a single quote and 1 so th this single quote is matching to this one single quote here so we don't get a syntax, a syntax error naturally that name wouldn't be there so the query would then look like this Therefore, this OR statement, um, it will do this every single time if this is wrong. Now, this would be wrong because why would the person who's trying to inject SQL into the query know what's in the database? The whole point is that they don't know what's in the database. Therefore, um, they're trying to get data out of it so they can then continue doing additional SQL injections to find even more data. Okay, um, So that's effectively what's going to go on go on. So let's change this back to then name. So we're replacing it with the value that um, name will be. And now we're going to fire this one um, with this value inside of here. So we know that um, it's not going to find David Thorne as name and it's not going to find user ID either. So we know that both of those are going to fail. Therefore it's going to move on to the, the um, OR statement which we've created here. So Let's come back to Firefox, refresh the page, and as you can see here, it just um, sends back all data because 1 is equal to 1. Okay, so it just starts from the top and continues all the way down. Now, I'm not here to teach you SQL injection. I'm here to teach you how to avoid it. Okay, so now what we want to be able to do is to avoid this. Now, previously with MySQL, there was a function which was available called MySQL Real Escape String. Um, which then assisted to then escape any naughty characters. Now, as we know, as it's stated here, this will be gone with the MySQL library as of PHP 5.5.0. Okay, therefore, you're going to have to use other methods, be it MySQL I or the PDO MySQL um, extension, which is why you're watching this video tutorial about PDO. Okay, so how can we stop this? Well, one of the the, the simplest options which you could do is not really the, the most correct option but it does work I'm talking about teaching you how to do it without getting any errors now what we can do here is just say name equals and then we say the PDO object and quote which is essentially the same as MySQL real escape string and that's going to um, add slashes it's going to add other quotes to then um, get rid of this SQL injection but it's not going to assist you with executing a proper um, syntactically correct SQL statements so let's come back to here and refresh the page and we don't get anything why because it did not execute properly therefore this if statement failed and we come down to the else and we say um, let's just say print r SMT and then error info just to see what it came back and it's going to come back with a standard um, message of you have an error in your SQL syntax somewhere near this but you can see what it's outputted it's outputted something that is completely wrong um, regarding the SQL syntax which you're supposed to use which is good because it meant that none of your data has been compromised but it's bad because it didn't work properly so you want to be able to program um, defensively to stop this. Now there's, this is not wrong in using it but it's not the best method to use. Now the question which you're asking is well how what's the best method? Well if you've been watching my other video tutorials then you'll, you'll already have learnt it and the best way is to use um, then um, parameters here using bind value or bind parameter. Now in this case we're using then the question mark to use um, the one index positions so we can just say SMT bind bind value we know that the first question mark is going to be replaced by then uh, user ID and then the second question mark is going to be um, binded uh, with uh, the name information. Now we've got rid of the quotes method so this time we're going to see how the bind value copes with um, this here all right and whether we get any errors or not. So let's come back here and as you can see we get an empty array. Now just to show you which uh, where it got executed 
and we'll just say uh, I got executed here. I'm just put a break on it just to show you that it actually got past the execute function, which returned true. And as you can see, I got executed here. Therefore, we know that the syntax was correct, although um, this is in here. Now, one, our code executed correctly. Two, our code didn't, our, our databases didn't get compromised. And three, some data from your customers or whatever, that didn't get shown to any naughty people out there which shouldn't see this data. So it's all thumbs up. Let's get rid of this text because we don't need that. So obviously we can use um, by parameter as well. And let's just change this. And let's just copy and paste that into there. And let's now just uh, change this to then uh, user ID. And then change this to uh, name, as I've done in the previous tutorials. But just for the sake of people that are watching this um, without watching the other ones, which is fine. Now we can see um, whether we get any more issues now. Now what we should do is we should get an empty array back. And we do, which is what we want. Okay, so um, that's really about it. Um, the fact is, is that you need to uh, program um, defensively and use the PDO class library correctly, right? Which it might be some more code, but writing one or two more lines of more code, well, it, it's it's correct. It's that's how it should be done. You should program for every single event, and the more and more you do it, the more and more used to. Um, doing this you, you'll get and maybe you can write your own um, extended version of the PDO um, uh, class itself um, to then assist you even further but at the raw part of it this is how you do it okay um, that's pretty much it for this one video tutorial as long as you've learned how to use PDO correctly you don't really need to concern yourself about the SQL injection because the creators of the PDO class library have already done this for you. Therefore, you don't effectively need to learn about SQL injection as long as you're using the PDO class library correctly. Okay. Um, if I have missed anything, if anyone thinks that there's something which I missed in it, that I could maybe do an extended version of this one video, then let me know if there's anything that you were unsure about um, using the PDO class library and not about SQL injection because I don't want to do any tutorials on SQL injection. I want to teach you how to avoid it, okay, like the plague. Okay, um, that's it. Uh, I'm probably going to do a another video tutorial uh, about some um, how to debug um, your parameters and so on. Um, but for the time being, that's it, that's it for now. Um, Okay, so let's just show you quickly, before I forget, let's change this to actually correct data, just to show you, because we did wrong data, let's change it to correct data now, and refresh it. You still see that we get a no response. Why is this? It's because the, the, it's syntactically incorrect, because it's escaped all of these naughty things, but it's allowed your code to execute properly anyway and get to the point where you want to go because if you were um, for example let's just to explain this a little bit more let's take this out and take this out and let's just say results equals this here now let's say you were um, you'd programmed uh, um, defensively and someone was trying to inject uh, this data into your query and uh, let's say for example that you were going to loop around uh, all of these anyway uh, as key, as value, you know, you were going to list them out, something like that, and we'll just say, you know, print uh, V, whatever. So that was going to be there, maybe a table of people, or or a listing of other articles, or something like that. So that's effectively, I in short, what you were going to do. You were going to iterate through um, the re results that come back. Now you know, um, even though the fact that someone's tried to inject SQL into your SQL statement, you know that your code is going to execute correctly and it's going to return an array. You don't have to do any error checking 
whether or not that is an array or not. You can just go straight into a for each loop and then iterate through the results. Now we know that there's not going to be any, therefore you should just get a blank page, which is better than having a horrible error outputted or having to then um, worry about how to programmatically work out what the error was. There's no, there's no reason to have a debugging if you program correctly. You should always debug, but if you program correctly, then there should be no errors. Okay, um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something. Um, subscribe, like, share, thumbs up, comments, send me a message, um, do whatever you want, all right? Um, ultimately, I hope that you've learned something. And if there is anything else, then let me know. All right, okay, that's it. My name's David Thorne from Thorne Website. Uh, have a nice evening. Goodbye.